Okay, so we've got a cubic equation and we've got the three roots of alpha, 5 over alpha and alpha plus 5 over alpha minus 1. We know that a cubic equation has these rules over here. So the sum of the three roots is equal to minus b over a. The sum of the pairs of the roots is equal to c over a. And the product of all three roots is equal to minus d over a. In this question here, we can see that a is just 1, b is p, c is q, and d equals minus 15. So of those rules, this one here is going to be the uh, a good one for me to use because it has minus 15 here. It doesn't involve these variables p and q, which is good. It means I can avoid the unknowns. So the product of my three roots, the product of these three things is equal to minus d over a. So let's do that. Alpha times 5 over alpha times alpha plus 5 over alpha minus 1 is equal to minus d. So that's minus minus 15. So plus 15 divided by 1 is 15. We can see here that the alphas at the front here will cancel out. And multiplying through those brackets, I'll get uh, 5 alpha plus 25 over alpha minus 5 equals 15. Let me take 15 away from both sides. So I'll get 5 alpha minus 25 over alpha minus 20 equals 0. Now, I don't particularly like this awkward alpha down there on the denominator. So let me multiply through both sides of this equation by alpha. So that's going to give me 5 alpha squared plus 25 minus 20 alpha equals 0. I'm now going to divide everything through by 5 and reorder it so it's in a nicer order. Like that. Now, to solve this equation, it looks like it's going to factorise nicely, but actually it doesn't. Um, so let's complete the square on this. So alpha minus 2, all squared. Then I'll have minus 4 plus 5 equals 0. Alpha minus 2, all squared, plus 1 equals 0. So alpha minus 2 equals the square root of minus 1 plus minus, which is I. Add the 2 to both sides, so I get alpha equals 2 plus or minus I. Like that. So these are two of my roots. Let me write these down up here. That's one root. Here's another root. I need the third root now. Um, now, the easiest way for me to get that third root, I think, is remember how they should multiply together. When I times my three roots together, I should get minus d over a. So let's use that fact to help me here. So. 2 plus i times 2 minus i multiplied by my third root, and I'll just call it gamma for now, should equal minus d over a, which remembers the minus, minus 15, so 15 like that. Let's multiply these out here then. So 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, then I've got the uh, 2 times minus i is minus 2i. The i times 2 is 2i. The i times minus i is minus i squared. These cancel out. We know that the minus i squared is just plus 1. So we have 4 plus 1, which is 5. So 5 alpha is 15. Or gamma, sorry, not alpha. Doesn't matter really. It's the third root that we're interested in. So those are my three roots. So that's part A done. Part B, 
We want to find the value of P. So let's come back up to where we had P, which is up here. P is the B, which appears in my equation here, which is the sum of the three roots. So I know if I add my three roots together, so 2 plus i plus 2 minus i plus 3, adding my three roots together will equal minus b over a. So b is p. Remember, a is just the 1, so I don't actually need that 1 there. Uh, when I add these together, the i's cancel out, and I get 7. So therefore, p is going to equal uh, negative 7. There we go. So I hope that's all made sense. You've copied that down, made your corrections. Here is now a question for you to have a go at. So press pause, have a go at that question. And when you're ready, press play, because I will show you the answers in a moment. I'm going to show you the answers now. <laughs> 